Hey guys, welcome back to a new video. This video will be about coroutine context. So in general, coroutines are always started in a specific context and the context will describe in which thread our coroutine will be started in. So for now, we only used globalscope.launch to start a new coroutine, but that didn't give us much control over it. And we can also start a coroutine by passing what is called a dispatcher to the launch function. So this launch function can actually take a parameter here which is a dispatcher and we can get those dispatchers by writing dispatchers dot and then choosing one of these options. So depending on what our coroutine should do, we should pass a different dispatcher here, starting with dispatchers.main that will start a coroutine in the main thread. And that is useful if you, if you need to do UI operations from within your coroutine because you can only change the UI from the main thread. Then we have dispatchers.io, which is just used for all kinds of data operations, such as networking, writing to databases, or reading and writing to files. Then we have dispatchers.default, which you should choose if you're planning on um, doing complex and long running calculations that would block the main thread. So let's say you need to sort a list of 10,000 elements, then you should do that in the default dispatcher to not block your main thread and your UI. Then we have dispatchers.unconfined. Unconfined is not, as the name says, it's not confined to a specific thread. So if you start a coroutine in unconfined that calls a suspend function, it will stay in the thread that the suspend function resumed. And what we can also do is we can just start our own new thread by writing new single thread context and pass a name for our thread, so for example my thread. That will just start a new thread and run the coroutine in that new created thread. But the really useful thing about coroutine contexts is that you can easily switch them from within a coroutine. So let's say we need to do a network call which we cannot do from the main thread and I kept the function from the last video for that, that suspend function that simulates a network call that just delays the current coroutine for three seconds and then returns the answer of that network call. And usually when we make a network request, we also want to use the result of that request and display it somehow in our UI. And there's the problem we have. We shouldn't make network requests in the main thread, but we can only change UI in the main thread. And coroutines actually solve that problems very easily. We can simply start a coroutine with the IO dispatcher. So not our own thread. Instead we write dispatchers dot io and actually i already created a dummy text view here in our activity main layout to which i want to set the the text we return in this network call function but let's assume this is a real network call and we um, don't want to call this from the main thread because it would block it instead we execute this function in our io dispatcher just as we should do it so we write val answer is equal to do network call. Then this coroutine will execute that function and this function will also delay our coroutine for three seconds. But after that line, we know that we have the result of that network call and what we can now do is we can easily switch the context to the main dispatcher by writing with context. That means we want to change the context of this current coroutine to dispatchers.main. And this code inside of this block will now be executed in the main thread. So here we can now set the text of our text view to our just gotten answer. So we write tv dummy, this is how I call it, dot text is equal to answer. And to actually show you that these are two different threads, I will lock that and print out the name of the current thread. So the first is just Let's write starting coroutine in thread and then pass thread.currentthread.name just as you know it from previous videos. Then we can copy that line, paste it in the with context block and writing setting text in thread and then pass the thread in which this block is executed. And if we now run our app, You can see the dummy text, three seconds delay, and then the network call gets the answer and 
it sets it to our text view. And if you take a look in LogCat, first it prints starting coroutine in thread default dispatcher worker two, and then it prints setting text in thread main. So the with context function actually works fine to change the current thread our coroutine is running in. So if this video helped you to understand coroutine context, then please let me know in the comments. Also, if there is anything you didn't like about this video, please let me know too, so I can improve on my content. Have a good day. See you in the next video. Bye-bye.